the Lord, I'm going to take this into what the Lord's been showing me this week. And it's a lot of it's personal, so we're getting back to, you know, what God shows me and how he talks to me. Um, last week, um, something came up in my conversation uh, with, actually it was David, and he said that at the men's meeting that, you were, that the men were talking about, you know, my position of being pastor and that my influence and um, calling had helped people's lives, you know. And he said what hit him the most was, he said he was thinking about that, and it was true, but he said what happened in his heart was, she's more than that to me. She's my friend. And when he told me that, kind of something just burst in my heart, you know, and, he, and so I texted him back the same day because it was so meaningful to me. Um, he said, and that was the beginning of this message. He said, I think of you more than just my, you know, not that that's not what position, anointing, but I think you, of you more than that on a personal relationship. You're my friend. And... Um, the message is going to be about friend because it unfolded in a lot of different ways this week. Um, and I was thinking about David is my friend. All of you are. Probably some of you don't know it as much because that, that barrier is still not down like Steve said, what place you have in, in my life. Well, David comes out and visits me what, every two or three months. And he comes to my house. He sits around, hangs out. <laughs> we go out to eat. We have to go to Costco. We, I mean, he's my friend. And when I was in the hospital, he started to go to work. But the Lord, he said, I, I can't go to work. My friend is in the hospital. It wasn't anything that was spoken, but it was, I, wanted, I have to be there. That's where my friend is. So God was just opening up this whole word to me. Um, I asked Mel the other day, she was talking, asking for prayer, and I looked at her right at her, and I said, <laughs> there was a, a whole family, Josh was there, Ryan was there, and she's like <laughs> pouring out, and she wanted to pray, pray for something she's prayed for many times, and I just said, do you have a relationship with Jesus? I mean, it was a pretty harsh thing to say, because I know she loves God, and she goes, <laughs> <I'm scared. laughs> I said, I didn't say, is Jesus your Savior? I didn't say, is he your healer? I didn't say, is he your provider? I said, do you have a relationship with him? We've talked since this week, since the Lord has been unfolding this word friend. It was, you know, I want Jesus to be my friend. Do you know you talk to a friend differently than you do anybody else? You talk to them differently. And I was like, Lord, I... I can pray to you as my Savior. Thank you, God. And I'm so grateful. And that goes, I can pray to you as my healer. You're, you know, that's what I need right now. My provider. I said, but I just can't walk up and say, blah, 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 blah. Or, it's not only that. I expect a friend to respond. I expect a friend to respond. Why? Because they love me. And my heart wants to always respond in that same way. So we've been talking about that. I want to read something to you. This one made me cry. And you probably won't have any idea why, but it's, this was like the next day. Hi, Juanita, just checking in. How's everything going? One of the members of our fellowship. I don't get many. Hi, Juanita. How's everything going in your life? This went back and forth a little bit, and, and then it was came to that we're in this together. But that just like touched my heart so much that somebody would care enough. And I, I try to check in on people, you know. Um, but that was why. Why? Why do that? Why bother? Juanita knows everything. She knows God. She has a, Why bother? To call and say, how are you doing? Are you okay? Do you need anything? I'm going to read a little bit more. Um, I didn't want to call that person out, but I just wanted to let you know. Um, my response was, thank you so much for caring. Because it takes a thought. It takes a moment. 
what, to text three or four lines? The problem is this isn't just about me and you, it's about each other. And that was what we were talking about. We have to be, there has to be a unity and a purpose for this. Or, you know, it doesn't, there's no life meaning to it. I want to read this. Tina sent this to me from Dale um, and uh, Gentry. We met him and his wife when we were up at uh, visiting Brandon one time, and she's kept in contact with him, and they have a, a weekly prayer. I want, you to, I want to read to you what they prayed. She sent this to me on Friday. God is astounding. He is amazing. I want to read this because I want you to understand the impact that God wants on this message. Father God, we thank you today for our friends. Our wonderful, fantastic, and marvelous friends. As described by Mr. Webster in the dictionary, it means people we know and with whom we have a bond of mutual affection. Our friend. Whoop! A person who supports us and stands with us through thick and thin. A person who overlooks our mistakes and our shortcomings, because we all have them. Who knows our weaknesses, but still loves us and cares about us regardless. Who is willing to stand with us and refuses to walk away, even when it may cost them their reputation or even their livelihood. One who endures our transparency and celebrates life with us. One who loves us and prays for us and is willing to sit with us during the heat of the night. Thank you, Father, for our friends, for our lifelong friends and others who may only walk with us for a season, um, making uh, invaluable contribution, making memories that will last for a lifetime. Help us this morning, Lord, to pause for a few minutes to send some words of appreciation to our friends, expressing our gratitude. We thank you, uh, Lord, for being a wonderful friend, as well as a savior, one who sticks closer than a brother. We are friends forever, Lord, and may others come to know you the same. Igniting a spiritual awakening based on what we just read. What is going to ignite a spiritual re um, awakening? Our relationship with one another. Um, in your name we pray, amen. Was that fitting? I mean, it was like it knocked me off my feet because the, the message had already been set before I got this. So just that it was based on friends, I want, as we go on in this, you know, with the word, I wanted you to keep this in your heart and in, in your mind. This is what God, it's not what he requires. It's who he is. And I do not truly believe that we have seen him in the full light and glory of him being our friend. And, you know, we're thinking it on, uh, th on this uh, human level. Turn with me to John 15. Starting with verse, we'll just start with verse 9. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Continue walking in that love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. And I, there's no legalism in this. It's not like you have to do certain things to live in, in that love. This isn't like a... I, was, I just want to share one of the things God showed me. Jesus, we think about Him as a teacher. But you know, scripturally speaking, He didn't teach a lot of Scripture. He lived it, he expounded it, but he spoke in parables when he was trying to teach somebody something. He brought it down. It's not how much you know up here, and he, know the, he knew the word, he was the word, but I was just reading over it. It wasn't that he had these long sermons. He brought it down so that we could live it to, our, to the level where we could understand it. So sometimes we look, for pastors, teachers, and we think they have, you know, some exceptional connection with the Lord. It's just, they walked, Jesus walked with his Father. He walked with God. He heard God's voice because he spent time with him. Um, these, 
These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man this that a man will lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you uh, do whatever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants. I do not want to be called a servant of God. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's an amen, hallelujah one. I don't want to live my life in that uh, respect because Jesus said, I call you friend. I call you my friend. That means not only is he my friend, it means I'm his friend. I'm concerned about the things that he is concerned about. Um, I, henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knows not what his Lord doeth. How, you know, we were just talking about when God speaks to us in those quiet times, he will tell us what he's doing, what he's going to do. Not like, oh, go buy that car or buy that house or, you know, he will direct us that way too. But that's not the words he's going to speak to us when we're there, you know, fellowshipping with him. He said, I call you not servants because I have told you every single thing on my heart. I've left nothing out. I have left nothing out. You guys know everything that's going to happen. They didn't understand it. But he didn't reserve anything. He laid it all out there. And that's what friends do. Now, the thing, two things came from this for me personally. Um, I have, but I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. All things that I have heard, I have made known to you. As I was reading this, uh, and it goes on to say, I have, you've not chosen me, but I've chosen you. And I always thought, well, he chose them to be the apostles. He chose them to be the disciples. No. He picked out 12 men that he chose to be his friend. He chose 12 men to be his friends. Motley crew. But he chose them to be his friends. Do you know that when he died on the cross... They didn't see their Savior dying. I did. They saw their friend. They saw their friend being tortured to death. And they couldn't handle it. Have you ever seen him that way? I really didn't. I didn't until I was reading this. It's easy to distance yourself from God Almighty, Savior, Provider. But you can't when you use the word friend. And they were, they saw their friend being tortured and beaten, misunderstood. And it shook him, you know, all the way. And there he had, you know, he chose these 12 and one of them was betrayed him. And he knew, if God has chosen you, he's chosen you to be his friend. You don't have to be. It doesn't mean you won't be saved because the blood of Jesus Christ that we accept for the forgiveness of our sins can be your relationship for as long as you live and it can be go no further. But I didn't really know this journey where it was taking me. But it's hard now for me that he showed me this to pray to him. I mean, I kind of stop and say, oh, I can't pray that way anymore because I have to talk to him as my friend. That means it may not be perfect language. It may not be that I have my thoughts all together. But I'll tell you one thing that happens when I talk to God. A lot of times my thoughts become uh, clear as I talk to Him. It become, they become clear of what I'm trying to say. And this message, you know how I got it? Talk to me started talking to talk to me he said you know um, I want to take you into a deeper relationship now I don't know what we talk about friendship we when I was my kids were young we used to sing this song oh what a friend we have in Jesus all our sins and griefs to bear oh what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer well we can carry to God in prayer but that word friend, I'm, I'm taking everything to my friend. Um, Tina has pretty well 
ticked all the boxes as far as friendship goes. Um, neither one of us have been, you know, well, neither one of us are perfect. And I remember the, God, the day God told me I was going to dump her. I just couldn't handle what she was in. It wasn't godly. It wasn't Christian. I didn't know what to do with it. He said, stick with her. That's all he told me. I said, okay. But you know, when I didn't have a place to live, she gave me a place to live. When we didn't have food, she fed us. Derek was a friend. I didn't have diapers. He bought baby food and he bought diapers. I never had to ask. I never had to ask. Because in James 2.23, it says Abraham was called the friend of God. Abraham was called the... F I'm going, you know, that's like... I can see Abraham being the friend of God. But you're calling me into this relationship with you. I can't see how I can be considered your friend. You know, me? Your friend? But I had to open my eyes and be willing to say, you know... Um, Holy Spirit, if that's what the Lord desires, you're going to have to teach me about walking with Him in a new way. I have to walk with Him hand in hand. It's not hard. Friendship is not hard when there's a commitment between two people and when you don't, when you decide to let, you know, that that person is valuable enough for you to stick with no matter their, you know, that that person is valuable enough to stick with no matter what you do and that you would know that you're that valuable to me that I could never say no or turn my back. <clears throat> That's what it means to be a friend. Like I said, I don't want to just be a pastor or a teacher and I don't always know how to reach out either and I'm trying to be way more open. I've had this year, since January, I've had four Actually, they're men, which is really unusual. I think God calls me more to um, be used. And I would, I'd hold back before. But it was just stepping into their life in a way of saying, somebody loves you. I showed a picture of Caesar today. I have a picture of Caesar and his two little kids, which I've had you pray for in the men's meeting. And you know, all I did was kind of put my arm around him and said, do you need anything? Do you need prayer? And just like, he thanked me on the phone. I mean, I haven't seen him for about three weeks. He just thanked me on the phone for being a friend. Thank you for being my friend. I send little encouragement things to him. But Jesus said here, what did he say? He said, you will lay down your life for your friends. It does, it does Take that kind of a commitment. Are we willing to lay our life down for each other? We, you know, we have go so far. And like I said, most of the time, I think in your thinking, well, I need to walk with the Lord all these times. She doesn't need anything. A little prayer here and there. But you know what? We all need basic human need to be loved. And you know when it's genuine. I'll tell you that. You know when it's genuine. Because um, the love bond is there. and A friend is a love bond. It's not just, there's no rules. I just had a couple more scriptures to, to um, I wanted to read, it was in there, but let's go to Proverbs 18.24. It was in that little prayer we just read. <coughs> I have four people in my life right now that are desperate to have a mate. They are desperate to have a mate. They think that having that it's the pain that's in their loneliness so much that they want to have a friend and they think that having a wife or husband is going to be that friend that they so need but G until we have that peace in our heart that we're loved and God is our friend then that's not going to be the answer but I have four people right now that are very very um, hurting in that area 
and it's so hurting that it's almost out of control. I have uh, some local, some out of state, but it's still pressure on my heart. It's not because they're wrong, but I know the pain that's causing them to feel that way, and I know that, that it's just, I want somebody to talk to, I want somebody to share with. Well, if you don't have Jesus to talk with and to be there for us, I can see that you're going to fill it up some way or other. Um, not that it's not nice to have, you know, have somebody to do things with. I think about that sometimes myself, but um, Josh isn't any fun. He doesn't like to do the things I like to do. <laughs> A man that has friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Now, Jesus in, in Hebrews, it says, he's going to bring many sons into glory. And I found my place in the family of God. I'm so thankful that I belong in that family and that I have that DNA. But he said, there's another step here. A friend will stick closer than a brother. You're not going to get rid of your friend. Your friend's going to be there. They're going to know what you need even before you ask some of the times if you're really, you know, that if they're really a friend, it's not that you, they're just, you share some stupid stuff with your friends too. It's not like, you know, that you, <laughs> hey, what you having for dinner tonight, David? <laughs> you know, not, nothing that seems that important, but it's the conversation and that communication that makes it important. And then over here in, in 1717, a friend loveth at all times. And a brother is born for adversity. A man void of understanding will shake hands and becomes a surety in the presence of his friend. Shaking of a hand is a sign of, I'm going to see this through even if I die. I mean, I'm making, that's how it used to be. You shake hands on something, you're binding yourself unto death for that. And this is the kind of thing, friendship just is like, oh, I don't like her anymore. I don't like him anymore. I mean, high school stuff. This is a lifetime commitment that Jesus has made to each one of us. And he's worth us making that same commitment. Now, we talked about spending time. I know that you're going to be searching your heart to this message. But if he desires to spend some time with me... Um, I stop doing some things sometimes that are important to me when a friend calls me on the phone. Just stop what I'm doing. It'll get done sooner or later. But what's important at that moment, somebody thought I was worthy to call. Someone was calling me because they thought, you know, that um, I might in some way be able to help. So that's what a friend is all about as far as I'm concerned. Um, Ruth, I got two more verses. Ruth, chapter 1. Now, this was Oprah and Ruth were both the daughter-in-laws of Naomi, and she was trying to get rid of them, send them back, because she had nothing to offer them, and she was going home, and she was, you know, she had nothing really to offer. But Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you. Don't make me leave you. Or return from following after you. For wherever you go, I'm going to be there. I will go. Wherever you lodge, tent, cabin, wherever you lodge, I'm going to lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God my God. Where you die, I'm going to die with you. And wherever you're buried, the Lord so do to me. And even more. If aught but death part me and you. And that's what the Lord said with us, to us. And that was, re the reason it's read a lot is because it's a love. But that's between two women. That becomes a, a bond of friendship and love that went way deeper. Now, do you know that um, through this, laying down of her life, and she did lay down her life. She went and she gleaned corn so that she could, so they could eat together. She did whatever she could do so that they could survive together. And then Naomi gave her some instruction, and through that, her following that, without even understanding it, but she wanted to just 
you know, um, she said, your God's going to be my God, so I'm, whatever you tell me. Um, she ended up being um, the mother of the great-grandfather of David. She wasn't a Jew. But her heart was shown there. And I'm telling you, if God cuts my heart open, I want it to look like that. I want it to look like that. I want it to be the real deal. And if you have to get in the trenches, and, and uh, that's okay. Because this commitment was unto death. It wasn't just like, you know, if I, I'm going to try it out and if I don't like it, I'm, you know, I'm going to go back. And then I have one more scripture and it's in Luke chapter 11. These are wonderful personal messages that God's been giving to me lately. But there, there's no reason for me to give them to you unless they're going to be life changing. Unless the Holy Spirit just drops into your heart that God wants to be your friend. And He want. I mean, that's, it's not just that. He can't be a friend unless He's got a friend to be a friend. Friend isn't a one-way street. Friendship isn't one person being a friend. It's two people or else you can't even use the word friend. Because that's what it means. Jesus said unto them, which you, see, this is how Jesus taught. He, and I, I wasn't going to go back over the scripture where in, you know, the Pharisees and the scribes, they got all over Jesus' case because his disciples were eating their hands without washing and they were plucking corn and rubbing them together. And you know what Jesus said? He said, I don't care what your interpretation is. I've got some hungry fit friends right here and they need to be fed. That's the meaning of the word. You guys have it all wrong. I've got some f hungry friends here. And I'm going to make sure they get fed. We can't, legalism can't be a part of this. Anyway, um, which of you having a friend, you go to him at midnight. And midnight at that time meant everything was shut down, going to sleep, doors closed, no lights on. Okay, not like today where life just keeps going on. And you come to the door and you knock, because this guy's your friend, and say, you know, um, I need some bread, I need some food, some, need, some friends have come a long distance, and I don't have anything to give them. And he said from within, um, <clears throat> don't trouble me right now, it's time's over, D door shut, I can't rise and give it to you because you're my friend. You know, just because you're my friend. But this other guy said, that's my friend, he's going to give me what I need. That's my friend. He's going to give me what I need. This guy wasn't asking for himself, and this was very important to me. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give because I'm his friend, but he will give it to me because my friends need food. If I go to Jesus and ask for your need from that position of counting on my friend, he's going to say, it's a step beyond even what we could ever imagine. But we have to start on the level of counting on Him being my friend. So when I pray for others, there's no way. No way. Do you know why? Because in the middle, between the need and our friend, someone was standing there saying, knowing that this friend would be moved because of the need. So it took the prayer also to another level. I think that, you know, we just, we, we, we don't take the word love and put feet on it. It's just a nice, how I think about people, I love you. I love you. But if you don't put feet and hands to that word, which is where the friends come in, and the main thing I want you to remember is when you go to pray, remember that your friend died on the cross for you. Your friend did that for you. And your friend is seated on the throne. And he wants you to know that he's your friend. We get too, you know, mental about the whole thing. And he's coming back to get me. And he chose those 12 disciples, not just to be disciples, 
those were the guys he chose to be his friends. He said, I call you my friends. That's Almighty God. I'm calling you my friends. 1 John 5.14 says that, <clears throat> that if um, we ask anything according to the will of God, he hears us. If we ask anything according to God's will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know that we have that petition. Remind yourself. Now then we go back and say, well, I don't know what God's will is. Well, it's pretty clear in the word of God. First thing I want to do is go back over that word, communication. You communicate with, let's say your boss. How do you communicate with your boss? It's not prayer, is it? How do you communicate with your parents? Not prayer. How do you communicate with, you know, a child or a child's teacher or your neighbor? How do you communicate? If prayer is only a matter of communication, that would all be right, but it's not. It's um, what we're going to read in a minute. It's the highest honor that God has given to us to be called his friend and God answers the prayers of his friend you talk differently and I don't know I'm going to use Tina in a minute as my example but if you don't have a friend you're not even going to know what I'm talking about your communication is not there you're it's all you know kept inside because you're not going to tell your neighbor your problems and what you're going through if you do it's going to be light most likely you're not even going to tell your parents what you're going through. And even um, your Christian brothers and sisters, and a lot of times they won't, you just think, oh, they wouldn't understand anyway, right? So then you go, well, how do I communicate with God then? If that's my, you know, level of communication. Let's go to John eleven twenty two. We talked about just talking to God, you know. But I realized when I was sitting there, I kind of had this revelation that I need to talk to Jesus as my friend. What does it mean to talk to a friend? I don't mean an acquaintance. My sister and I are just completely like opposites on the social spectrum there. I've always had one close friend in my life. One close friend doesn't mean I agree with them all the time or they agree with but I've had one close friend so I know what I'm talking about my sister is a socialite she's got lots of friends I mean she's just wherever she goes she's standing in line and she'll make a new friend she my dad used to say she'd you know bring home anybody <laughs> I like the stray dogs we're the opposite but I needed a friend I needed a friend um. This is about Lazarus when Lazarus was dead and Mary and Martha said, you know, while he was sick, you know, they called on Jesus to come because they knew that he would heal them if he came. But he's dead now. Then Martha said in verse 21, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, whatsoever you will ask of God, he will give it to you. I know that whatsoever you ask of God, he will give it to you. That's how confident we should be in our prayers. I know that whatever I ask of God, because Jesus said, uh, your brother will rise again. I have a couple more verses. And I don't want to read the whole chapter, though. Um, chapter down to 40, verse 40. Jesus said... Um, Verse 40, Jesus said unto them, Didn't I tell you that if you would believe, that, that you would see the glory of God? Didn't I tell you if you would believe? They believed that God would hear his prayers, but they didn't believe that if, you know, they would see the glory of God. Every answer to prayer reveals the glory of God. Every answer to prayer. We should be expectant. And I'll, I'm going to talk about the practicality of that in a minute. Then they um, took away the stone where the deaf, uh, dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you because you have heard me, and I know that, that you hear me always. 
but because of these people who are standing by, that they may believe you have sent me. That's why I have spoken this. And he yells, Lazarus, come forth. I know that you always hear me. What's that based on? What kind of relationship is that based on? Servant? You would have, if you had servants, you wouldn't be talking to them like friends. And that's what we put our, ourselves in that position of just being a servant. Therefore, when we come to God, we don't come to God expecting that He has heard me. And it says in 1 John 5, 14, If I know that He's heard me, then I know He's going to respond. Um, let's go to John 14, 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also, and even greater works than these shall he do, because I am going to my Father. Whatsoever you ask in my name, I am going to do that for you, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I do. And that seems like a whole another world away from me. That whatever I ask you, Jesus, you said you would do. But it's based on the relationship that I have with him. Am I going as a neighbor? Am I going as a servant? Am I going as he's the boss? How am I approaching him in prayer? How do you approach him in prayer? And uh, Nicole was asking that kind of last week. I don't know how to pray. And I, I've come across a lot of people that don't know how to pray. They think of God as still and all-powerful, but it's almost like, did I win the lottery? You know, is he going to answer that prayer? Was that, do I have the right numbers? <laughs> you know, do I, am I saying the right words? Am I saying it the right way? If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Is your life based on the promises of God? Did you see this is in red letters? It's in red letters in my book, in my Bible. Jesus in the presence of God and the Holy Spirit's here. And, he, and the Holy Spirit is the channel or, or the energy of God whereby Jesus shows up. And he said, if you ask me anything, I will do it. Okay, I'm going to go on in, again in a minute and, and talk about that. Let's read a couple more of these scriptures. Uh, 15, 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask what you will, it'll be done unto you. Here is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. Bearing much fruit means answer to my prayers. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you. And that your joy might be full. The joy of Jesus Christ was he knew that his father was going to hear him and answer every prayer. His joy, his confidence was in this relationship that he had with God. Do you think Jesus ever asked the father anything and doubted that the father was going to grant him? Could you even imagine Jesus praying like that? But that's how we pray, huh? This is my commandment that you love one another. Greater love hath no man than this. That a man will lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends. If you keep on this path. Henceforth I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord does. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my father I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you that you should bring forth much fruit and that your fruit would remain that whatsoever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. The highest honor that Jesus placed on his disciples was calling him his friend. Uh, I can go to the Father as someone that's saved. I can go to my father as one that's forgiven, but it's really difficult to go as a friend to the Lord. 
Now I'm I'm going to um, let's read Proverbs seventeen seventeen. A friend loveth at all times. I had a brother is born for adversity, but a friend loveth at all times. Did he call the disciples his friends? Okay, it loveth at all times. Good, bad, no matter what they did. He never loved them more than he did when he said that, and he never loved them less for what they did wrong. Never loved them. He could never love us more than he does right now. He could never love you more than he does right now. And he could never love you less than he does right now. I don't care what you do. Proverbs 18.22. <laughs> okay, you already got that one. Okay. <laughs> A man that hath friends must first show himself friendly. And there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Um, Tina and I had been friends a long time. Long, long time. Before she um, met Dan. And when I went through all the, you know, we went through everything together. Uh, always together. Well, I lived a pretty, as far as I was concerned, I lived a life close to the word, you know. And it says not to be, you know, to um, be involved with the things of the world. And I hated all kinds of, any kind of sin. So when she called me one day and, you know, after she had um, been going with Dan just a little while and told me that she had fallen into sin, I'm listening to the phone and I'm going, okay, I can't be your friend anymore. That's it. I'm not going down that avenue. I can't be your friend anymore. So, um, you know what the Lord told me? As soon as I hung up the phone, because I, I was, I've, I've done this before. I mean, I've stood up for the word of God. He said, you stick with her no matter what. And I learned that God sticks with us no matter what. No matter what. That's, that's what a friend does. And I didn't really know that friendship would go that far. So as that, I was praying over this the other night and at the night of um, the prayer meeting um, I was here sitting there thinking the first person I call with good news first person I call with good news Tina the first person I call when I need help Tina the, per the person that I share trivia with what I went to the market when I'm you know it's Tina is she perfect? I don't think so, but neither am I. Can you find reasons not to, you know? I'll tell you one thing she said to me once. She said, you know, I could probably go pick out your clothes for you. I know you so well. And I was like, <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> but I think she, I think she, you know, she could. Um, been through a lot this year. And when I call and, you know, I'll say this is going on or that's going on, she said, do you need me to come down? Do you need me to come down? It doesn't matter what she's doing or what her schedule is, do you need me to come down? Most of the time I say no. And um, because I know that, you know, we'll get through it. But if I do, she'll stop whatever she's doing and she'll come. What if you have a friend and they don't pick up? See, she's as close, I'm just talking about my end. I'm that close to her too, if she called me. She's as close to me as the cell phone. But what if she didn't pick up? What if she didn't pick up? What if he didn't pick up your prayer? What if he didn't pick up when you called? You know what, you don't expect him to. Because you don't see him in that close relationship with you. I, it, you know, there's others that I would call in my family that would, I would expect to respond sort of the same way, but maybe not fully because they could make an excuse if I needed something. Well, maybe tomorrow. I mean, is it immediate? Do I need, you know, if it's something immediate, you might show up, but um, if it can be put off for a few days, you know, 
But that's not the way it is with Jesus. He's your friend. He accepts you as you are. He, he doesn't love you less because, or, you know, because you did something stupid. I don't always agree with some of the things that she says. I don't always respond, but I don't always agree. But it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change the full acceptance of that person as my friend. When I say, when I talk about her to people who don't, I don't even use her name, I just say my friend. That's a, that is the highest uh, compliment you could give anybody because it means years of trust, going through things together. I mean, she's better at this than I am. She really is. I mean, as far as my kids go and what they've been in and how she's prayed for them and everything. Um, There's this, you know, like I said, this is what a friend is. And if you can't, if I can't describe a friend to you, then I don't know how to describe prayer. But Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you. I will never leave you or forsake you. I'm in it with you. I'm in it with you. I couldn't get rid of her if I wanted to. I couldn't. She is so committed to the relationship that we share in the Lord. But I was thinking that I couldn't get rid of her. It wouldn't matter what I did. She'd be there with, you know, to see me through the best she could, um, whether it would be in prayer or just being there. Um, I've learned to accept that, and that's really hard because we're kind of used to just doing things on our own. It's fine to have acquaintances or people you do things with, but I've learned to accept um, her friendship as, you know, love. I mean, friendship is love. Jesus said, I love you to his disciples, and I'm gonna call you, my, you're my friends now. Well, if he called them his friends, then he's put that same opening for us. It's not on his end. We're hesitant to trust him all the way. We're, he we're hesitant to just let it all out. Because if we let it all out, he might reject you. He knows what you're made of anyway. I was listening to David Wilkerson last night. One of my, I mean, he is my all-time favorite. If you want to listen to any messages on the, on the YouTube, listen to David Wilkerson. And he was um, talking about his private war. Saints private war there was a, uh, there was a time when his daughter was in a, a hospital for three days she'd had cancer this was years ago when they used cobalt treatments and the room had to be sealed off because of lead you know you had to wear the vests and everything so for three days um, she was in this room that had cobalt tre treatment so his daughter's in there dying his wife is out on the because they couldn't go in there it was out on the wall just Pounding, saying, God, why, why, why? He said, I couldn't take it. I got in my car and drove up to my place where I go talk to God. I got out of the car. He said, for two hours, I cried. And then, and then he said to him, he said, um, you're her earthly father, and you love her, but I'm her heavenly father. Who loves her more? David, who loves her more? And he said, well, you do, Lord. And... Um, and some other conversation. But at the end, he said, get it out of your system. Go ahead. I've got this. I've got this. You get out of your system. I know you're angry. I know you're upset. I know you don't understand. Get it out of your system. But when you leave this place, remember, I love her more than you do. If they have a friend, they will take them up in their arms and take them to the throne of, of you know, God's grace. Just like that man that came knocking at the door saying, I need Brad for my friend. And he said he didn't answer it for because he was his friend. He answered because the man outside expected him to answer it. 
He said, I'm not answering the door when I'm asleep. And he said, I, he didn't answer because of his friend. He answered because the friend outside was not going to go away until he answered that door. We give up. I don't even know what... I mean, it's almost like uh, we pray we were in a tight corner. And we don't realize we have a friend 24-7 waiting, waiting to answer our prayers. Like Jesus said, Father, I know you always hear me. I always tell you're going to hear I know you're going to answer my prayer. And so you need to maybe just to pray, you know what, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet, but that's where I want to be. Jesus wasn't praying for himself. He was praying for someone else. And that's probably one of the biggest uh, hindrances that we have. I, you get, when you have a close friend, you learn, you learn to listen to what the heart's saying, not necessarily just what the words are saying. You know, we all go through the struggles as a Christian, and, and most of the time, when God's growing us up, no one understands really what we're going through. It's like our own, you know, private college that God's taking us through but um, we should be there if not, for no other reason if somebody's going through something heavy you know a burden carried by two people is a lot lighter than somebody that's trying to carry it alone and so maybe that's just what Jesus wants you to know if you let him get under your burden with you it's going to be a lot lighter now, so that's my what God has showed me this week on prayer and about his presence that really we couldn't stand in his presence. If you knew, if we really knew, it's not because of how big and mighty, it's just because of who he is. It's just because of who he is that he would reveal to us his glory. This is who I am. Now do you trust me? Full acceptance. I don't know, I grew up, like I said, when Tina's, you know, called me about what sin she was in, I'm just like, I almost dropped the phone. How could you? Have you ever read the story of David? He had a reputation. He was a righteous man. People called him a righteous man. He was a warrior for God. He took down Goliath. And then he sinned. And God was there for him. Just as much, if not more. David repented and it broke his heart. But in a moment, somebody can do something wrong. Is God going to reject you? He can't. He can't. He can't love me any less. Because if he could have, he would have left me behind a long time ago. So if you have a prayer of your own or somebody you want to pray for, please take this opportunity and say, Lord, I got it. You're my friend. You're my best friend. You're a friend like no other. And there's a scripture that says, a friend stick us closer than a brother. You can count on your family sometimes, that's what it means, but it says you can even count on him more. If you have a friend that's, you call somebody a friend, but you don't talk to them very often or you're not involved with their life, they're really not a friend. They're an acquaintance. Because if nothing else, you're going to call on that friend and say, like the other day, I was had to go get to the dentist and another tooth issue. When I got home, I just barely walked in the door. There was a message. How did it go today? Who cares? It's just a tooth. How did it go today? Jesus said, how did it go today? How'd you do today? Let's uh, stand and pray.